my name is Christina Lee and I am a mandala artist. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on this piece from the kit that you've probably purchased from me. When I first started dot painting, I spent so much money and so much time trying to figure out what tools and what paints to use. As I've been posting on social media, I get questions every single day about where to start. This kit is the perfect place to start. It's everything you need and I have taken out all the guesswork. It's not required to purchase the kit, but it will be really helpful to have the products that I have. Before we go any further, I want to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you love my work and want to support me, you can follow me on Patreon where you receive exclusive content and extra rewards. Before we get started, I want to go over the products that are in your toolkit. The first thing you're going to find are two sets of dotting tools, one with a ball stylus and the other set is the acrylic rods. The next thing in your toolkit is going to be your paints. These paints are from Deco Art Americana, and if you love dot painting, you'll want to get some more of these paints in your favorite color. The next thing in your kit is a watercolor pencil. These are really great because they erase really easily with a little water and a Q-tip. Speaking of, we have five Q-tips available that are really great for helping erase mistakes or the lines that we talked about. The last thing in your kit is going to be a gessoed canvas and a stencil. If you love dot painting and you want to do more of it, I would highly encourage you to get some black gesso. This is a Liquitex brand. I highly recommend it. It's worth the investment and a little last a long time. So let's jump right in. As we get started, we're going to need to create some lines on here so we can put our stencil on straight. So to do this, you're going to need a ruler. And since this canvas is six inches by six inches, we're going to measure exactly three inches in two different spots. We're going to turn our canvas and draw a straight line between those two. And then we're also going to do the same on this side. And if at any time I go too fast for you, you can always pause the video. I'm going to come back this way. Okay, so now we have our center line, our center dot intersection, and then we can take our stencil and we're gonna find that little intersection right in the middle. And we're also gonna line up those cross lines that we have here and here we're looking for those cross lines and if your stencil doesn't exactly um, fit your canvas it's okay so we're just gonna go in and fill in the rest of the lines we don't have Since you're using a watercolor pencil, um, you don't have to worry about the lines that are being created on the canvas because we will be able to wash them off later with some water and a Q-tip. And just like that. Oops, I missed a couple. I can line them right back up. And add them in. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do our very first dot. It's the most important dot. And I always say it's, um, if you don't get this one centered, it's really hard to keep your, um, keep your mandala centered. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first rod, it's the green rod, and we're going to dip it into our paint. And we're not dipping it very far. We're just enough to get paint on the tip of it. So you can see about how much paint I'm putting on there. And then we're going to take this, make sure it's rounded, get a good look at that, and see how the paint moves. It moves really slowly around the tip of that. And then we're going to go straight down for that first center dot. It looks like you have kind of this horseshoe shape here. That happens a lot, so all you need to do is go ahead and reload 
your um, dotting tool and just add a little bit more paint. I'm just scooping a little bit and adding a little bit more. How I like to clean my dotting tools off is taking a napkin or a paper towel and just wiping them off. You can get your tool just a little bit wet to help get some of that off the edges there. Over time though, I just, I personally end up, my, do my tools end up getting pretty messy. The next thing we're gonna do is take our coral color and our smallest dotting tool tip, which is going to be this pink size, the smaller size of that. And the way we're gonna load our dotting tools, we're just gonna kind of dip and scoop just a tiny bit. So you have about this much paint on the tip. And we're gonna apply it directly on the line. Just like that. And every time we're gonna place a dot, we're gonna put more paint on our dotting tool. And we're gonna go around. And place them on all the lines. We're gonna get close but not close enough to touch the paint, um, the blue paint. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and dot in between each dot too. This is great practice for spacing, kind of eyeballing right in the middle between those dots. And the great thing about mandala painting is it doesn't have to be perfect for it to look really good. Like that. Next we're going to take our medium size acrylic rod. So you should have three clear acrylic rods. We're going to take the middle one. And we're also going to use our white paint for this. So we have our middle sized acrylic rod and we're going to dip it the same way that we dipped our first um, for our first dot. We're just going to get the tip of it with a little paint on it, see if I can get it to focus. There we go. So it looks a little rounded on the end there. We're just gonna place the dots right on this line. It's kind of landing in between this line here and your coral dot. If you get too much paint on your tool, it will make your dot a little bit bigger. It's okay. Um, that just means that you don't want to apply as much pressure. And you kind of watch how, um, how the dot expands as you're placing it down. Let's see if I can get a really good shot of this one. So what I mean is... I'm not going to touch the tool all the way to the canvas. I'm just going to watch the size of it compared to the size next to it. And I try to get about the same size every time. And this is part of the meditation process. You're really focusing on applying the paint to the surface of the canvas. Like that. This next part might feel a little bit more advanced. Um, and so do whatever you feel comfortable, but I have faith in you that you can do it. 
We're gonna take our pink dotting tool. The last time we used it was on the small side. We're gonna do the larger size tip here. And we're gonna take our purple color and we're also just gonna dip it the way we did the first time. And we're gonna apply a dot right above the white. And I'm focused on trying to paint this dot at the very same spot of the grid as close as I can. It's right about that intersection. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna flip the same dotting tool over and we're gonna use the smaller tip there. And we're gonna do something called walking the dots. So we're gonna load our tip up, just a little bit of paint. It doesn't need to be a whole lot. And we're gonna start right next to our big dot here. And we're just gonna walk our way down with these smaller dots until they almost disappear. Just like that. And I like to do my walking dots um, one way at a time because it's repetitive and kind of meditative. And if you feel like you're having a hard time picking up the right amount of paint, that's just something that you'll get better with over time. You have to learn the paint and also learn your tools too. It just comes with practice. I'm gonna start back down here this time and I'm gonna come the other way. They might touch a little bit, that's okay. Since this is a six point mandala and we have 12 sections on the stencil, we're gonna skip every other um, section now as we come in with the green and we're gonna use the purple tip here. So just like before with any of the acrylic rods, we're gonna just dip the tip in. Let's see if we can get it to focus. And you're gonna have that kind of dome shape on the, on the end there. And we're gonna come in on the purple and right above the purple, and we're gonna leave just a tiny little gap there. So you're kind of placing the dot right in the center of the two lines there, of the, the line of the stencil and also between the, the purple dot. So we're gonna skip this section and we're gonna to go to the next one. Okay, I wanted to show a little closer up how this is gonna go. So take your time as you're placing these dots. Okay, my focus stays on the grid, wherever, what's happening on the grid. 
Next I'm going to come back in with the blue and we're going to use the white tool. It's going to be the larger size. They kind of look a little bit the same, but this one is on the larger end. And I'm just going to place a dot right on the intersection again, just like we did with the purple. Now you're going to flip this side around and you're going to use the tip, the smaller tip with that, the same color of blue, and we're going to walk the dots again. Just like that. Now you can come up here and do the opposite side in the opposite direction. Sometimes I like to do it this way too. Okay, now I'm just double checking to make sure I got all of them because sometimes I might miss one. Now we're going to take that same dotting tool size we just used and we're going to come in with our white. And this is, um, this is a swoop or we're going to drag a dot. And the trick is to go slow and take your time and also load the same amount of paint every time you do it. So we're just going to put our tool to the canvas. And we're going to pull up very slow. You can see I just dragged the dot just past that intersection there. So our goal is to do the same thing every time. So that one didn't quite make it. What happened is I didn't have enough paint on my tool. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and try to fix that. I'm going to take one of my Q-tips and just a little bit of water and we're going to erase that dot. I'm going to let that dry a little and then I'm going to reload my tool and this time I put a little more paint on it and we're going to drag that again just the right spot that's close enough I did it again. You can leave it, it's not really that big of a difference. I'm just, um, I just like to change it. Okay, so we'll let that one dry. We'll come back to the one that we originally erased. Perfect. Okay, 
and one more. We're using the white dotting tool again. This time we're going to use the large side. And we're also going to be using our white paint again. We're going to be walking our dots. This time we're going to start on this side next to the purple, kind of snuggling that dot right in there. And then we're going to walk our way up to the swoop. We're going to come back in with our coral color and also our blue dotting tool with a large tip. And we're going to scoop just enough paint on there. We're going to add a dot right on the line here in between the white paint above the purple. Next, we're going to take our blue acrylic rod and we're going to use our purple color. And again, just get the tip of it. And we're going to come in and we're going to try to land the center of it right here in this crosshair. Now we're going to come in with this uh, green color and the tip, uh, the larger tip of the white tool. And we're going to place it right above this purple color here. Right on that line. We're going to take the same tool and the same color and we're going to place it right here between the purple and the white, just kind of filling that gap in, sort of bridging it there. And you want to try to nail it in the same spot every time. Now we're going to take the small end of the white dotting tool and we're going to dip it in that green and we're just going to walk some dots. Probably fit about three of them in there. Maybe four. So we're going to take our pink rod dotting tool and I'm going to show you where I'm going to try to place it. It's going to be right about here 
is where I want my dot to be. It's not quite centered on that little cross. It's just below it. Okay, so I got my paint loaded. I'm making sure it's the nice rounded tip. Kind of smooth it out a little. So you're gonna see a little bit of a gap between your, your uh, swipe there and the actual dot. The next part is going to be great practice for creating the same size dot each time with the dotting tool. I'm going to take the green and uh, also the pink dotting tool, the smallest tip, and we are going to travel around this dot with those little dots. with the magic of video they're all done the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in with our purple color and we're going to go with our largest tip on the green tool and you have to make sure you get a good amount of paint on there so you're kind of scooping it a little let's see if i can show you so you're kind of pulling the paint up so you have just a little dollop there and we're going to add that right here in that cross section. Now we're going to take our large side of the blue dotting tool and the coral color and we're going to start walking the dots from here to the, to the purple dot. And it's really cool how the dots get smaller as you climb up the, the purple dot there. Sometimes I don't have quite enough paint on my tool. So I'll go back and I'll scoop a little bit more and that will give me enough to carry all the way to the end. Now we're going to take the green size 
uh, dotting tool, the largest size, and we're going to take the white, and we're going to go on the outside of that coral color. And I'm going to dip the first one I got there, but I'm also going to re-dip just so I have enough paint to come all the way up to that purple there. We're going to do the same color, but this time we're going to use the blue rod. We're going to make sure that dome shape is on the tip there. And we're going to go right above this, this green dot here. Just like that. Next we're going to take the blue ball stylus and we're going to take the larger end and dip it on our coral. We're going to go right here, right above that white dot we just painted. Again, you're putting it in the same spot on the grid. So for me, it's right in that cross section there. going to do that same color coral we're going to take the large end of the green ball stylus and we're going to come right in here and we're going to place it right there kind of nestle it in that little uh, blank or open section if you find that space is not quite big enough you don't have to put as much paint you can make your dot a little bit smaller Like this section right here is a little bit too small, so I'm going to make a smaller dot, and that's just fine. Now we're going to come in with our blue color and the large size of the white ball stylus. And we're going to start right here in this little area, and we're going to walk around this white dot until we get to the coral. we have a little gap here I'm gonna come in with the purple my large blue stylus and I'm just gonna fill that in a little
come in with that green color and my largest dotting tool, which is the Herb the Ball Stylus, and that's the, um, the green one. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to apply a really nice big fat dot right here. I'm being really generous with how much paint I'm putting on my, my tool. We're going to go with the large side of the blue dotting tool, the ball stylus. We're going to take that same color and we're going to walk our way up to that purple dot. Now we're going to come in with our pink dotting tool, our ball stylus with the smallest tip. We're going to get that white and we're going to put just a little bit of paint on that tip and we're going to drag that dot straight out from the purple. We don't want it very big. We don't want to go off the canvas, but just really close to the edge. that same dotting tool in the same color, we're going to come in and we're going to add a little tiny dot right above that coral color. To finish off this painting, we're going to go in with our largest ball stylus on the green tip. And we're going to take our blue color and we're just going to kind of nestle that right in between um, the green and the, the white dots there. The key is to get it in the same spot on both sides of that line. So here you're really focused on your spacing. You're going to let this dry for 24 hours before we do anything else with it. We are back. Our canvas is dry and I always keep a little bit of water in a squeeze bottle and um, I just do this. You can have a cup of water and we're just going to wet that q-tip and we're just going to erase all of our lines. Don't mind my cat. Since it's a watercolor pencil, it will come right up. Okay, I think we got them all. So the next step after this, we're going to let it dry completely again, and then it will be on to the varnish. Now that you've finished your piece, you're ready to varnish. I'm not going to demonstrate that today, but you can get something like this Krylon varnish spray. I got this one at Walmart. Um, I think they sell at other places, but just read the directions on the can and it works perfectly. Also, if you love this design, you can do it in another color palette. I hope you've enjoyed yourself today. Please leave a comment and let me know how it went for you. Thanks for watching.